Great scientific advances are oftentimes sudden accomplished facts before most of us are even dimly aware of them. Breathtakingly unexpected, for example, was the searing flash that announced the atomic age. Equally unexpected was the next gigantic stride, when man moved out of his very orbit to a point more than 20 million miles to Earth. Is it your desire that the fishes, they swim away? Come on, pull up on the net. Here. Fish and nets. Many people are always to catch a little fish. Now in Texas, that's where one little wolf, she catches a bigger cow. The net, the net. Texas. Texas. What is that? Oh, Mandela. You do not know of Texas. She's a big country across the sea, near America. That's where the cowboys... Silencio! Are. We go back. We fly, Verico. It is a possibility that in the aircraft there may be people. But, Verico, there is no usual aircraft. There are no people on it. Oh, Mandela, you know this thing you say, huh? You were perhaps inside of it, huh? What are we, children or men of the sea? We go back. We go back. Come on! 
men. He still lives. Take him to the boat. Quickly. Take him. Bring him. Could not reach them. May they rest in peace. indication she's splashed in somewhere right here. 20,000 leagues under the sea. Perhaps not, General. Calder may have regained control. I appreciate your optimism, Doctor, but that's the way it reads. We got a radar blip on her just off Iceland. Altitude, 200 miles, rate of descent. What was it? 3,500 feet per minute, sir. Another sighting by Stillman from Marseille. Rate of descent still, 3,500 feet per minute. I'm sorry, Doctor, that puts her right down with the fish. What makes me sick inside is that they were so close. So very, very close. They made it there and almost made it back. Major Stacy speaking. Hold it. Tell the general. McIntosh. Yes? Where? Is that confirmed? Thank you. She's down off Sicily, Doctor. Only a few kilometers off the coast of a fishing village named Jeddah. Where is it? Jeddah. There it is, right there. Major, we'll need the cooperation of the courtesy of the Italian government. So get the State Department on the phone. Tell them we've got a green light from the White House and tell them to get the Italian embassy to clear the path for us. You better tell them we're in a hurry and to roll up the red tape and put it away in a drawer until this thing is over. Yes, sir. After that, call transport. Tell them the doctor and I are leaving now for Sicily. Yes, sir. Fresh, Andiamo. Under them, gently. Andiamo. Mettilo là. Oh, take them to the comune di Gerra, quickly. Oh, Bondella, get it up, subito. Sì, si, signor commissario.
Fata largo, per favore, per favore, fate largo. Enrico, you were inside of the wreck. Were only those two men aboard? No, I was inside with the Mandello. We saw one more a man, but it was a certainty he was dead. But Signore Commissario, the ship of the air, she was so big, so vast. Surely there must have been other men inside, too. Now, I want you to remember everything that happened and tell me about it slowly. Signor Commissario, Signor Commissario. Che c'è? The doctor is not at home. He's far over a Signore Martinelli who is immediately to have a bambino, perhaps two inches before. Who knows? And Signor Martinelli is a very sick man. Ah, oh, that's too bad. There is that old doctor from Rome traveling with his American granddaughter. Is he still here? He, he, the old man with the house on the wheels. Yeah. Pepe would know. Pepe! Pepe! Pepe sells them worthless or shellfish, anything of a no value. Pepe! Pepe! See, Marico, oh, you have need for me? That old doctor from Rome who travels here, do you know where he is? Dr. Leonardo? Si, si, proprio lui. He has come to the Via Messina. Only a small kilometer from the residence of Signor Crepe. Good. Do you know where the place is? Uh, of Monday? course. Get the doctor here at once. Si, immediately. Pepe. Pepe. Ah. Come with me, please. Come now, come quickly. A great aircraft fell into the sea. It's a terrible tragedy. And the two men need you now. Slowly, slowly, my friend. Do I understand there has been an air crash and men have been hurt? Si, sí, si, sí. and the Tori Borino, the only one we have is with Signore Martinello, who's about to have twins, triple, perhaps more. Who could know? But I'm afraid I won't be of any help. I'm a doctor in zoology, not medicine. But my granddaughter, it is possible, Marisa. Ah. Ah. Signorina, you are a doctor of people with hurts? Not yet, not for another year. Oh. I'll do the best I can. Ah, ah sta bene. Si eh, devi venire là. Si si. Oh, e sarà come perché già sei si, è caduto lì dentro. Ma si calmi, calmi, si calmi, verrà, non vedi. Ma che mi pare meglio che tu devi andare giù immediatamente perché stanno aspettando se... Ehi, si calma, sarà meglio. Ah, eccola, andiamo subito, eh. Come this way. Be back as soon as I can, Grandpa. Va bene, va bene. Andiamo, dottore, andiamo. Questo è stato un grande accidente. E tu sta fermo. Fammi il favore quanto sei carino tu, mio accino. Ah, good afternoon, my young merchant friend. And what is it you wish to sell me today at an exorbitant rate, I'm certain? An inedible clamp with which you are willing to part for very, very little money, I'm sure, huh? Dr. Leonardo, mm. you are a kind of man, a just man, a man of much learning, a man of great wealth. A man of wealth? A professor of... <laughs> ah, of course, Pepe. Come on in, my Sicilian band, and we'll bargain, huh? <laughs> Come on. You have a 200 lira? <laughs> There's a possibility that I have such a fortune. Aye. Now, tell me. Let me see this great treasure of such great value. Come on. Where? You have a 200 lira with you? Uh -huh. In your purse? Yes. That is a true fact? Sure, that is a true fact. But now tell me. Why is your need so great and so urgent? Because with a 200 lira, I can have purchased a hat from Texas. Hmm? Please, may I have all my money now? A hat from Texas? <laughs> I don't understand you, Pepe. It is the hat the cowboys wear when they shoot the bandito. Bang, bang! And the man, he is dead. Uh, those American movies. Yeah. With so great a need, Pepe, 
You deserve the 200 liter. Cento e duecento. Now, let me see. What do you got? Huh? Hey. <laughs> Come here. Hey. I better get my money's worth or I'm a coming after you. Believe me. Now, what the is that? Tell me, where did you find that thing? In the water, Doctor! In the sea! I know. You want to know where you are. In Gera. Gera? A village in southern Sicily. Oh, about where we figured. The others. How are they? As far as I know, your, your aircraft's at the bottom of the sea. Whoever else was on it. Oh, except for this man. His condition is critical. I'm sorry, but you're in no condition to get out of bed. Doctor. Dr. Sharman. I must ask you to leave this man alone. Please. He's extremely ill. Please. Dr. Sharman. Will Can you, you leave me? this man alone and go back to your bed? Listen, nurse, I'm in no mood to argue with you. I'm Dr. not Sharman. a nurse. I'm a doctor. Or almost a doctor, and this man may be dying. All right, almost a doctor. Do you know what's wrong with him? No, not exactly. Well, I do. And I know it's fatal. Eight of my crew have already died from it. Now, if you must stay here, stand still and be quiet, please. Doctor. Dr. Sharman, can you hear me? Will you please lie down? Please. Doctor. Are we... Are we going to make it... Make it back? We are back. We are back. Look, you're suffering from exhaustion. Please get back in Quiet. bed. The animal specimen. Is it all right? I don't know. We crashed into the Mediterranean, and I guess it went down with a wreck. The others are dead. Make them... Make them find it. My... My notes... Doctor. Will you lie down? No. Doctor, how long can it live in taste in that metal cylinder? Patient. I've got to know. It's Curly, our only hope. Cooperative, Doctor. Informative, all Doctor. together a joy and a pleasure to be around. Now, what specimen? What fatal disease? Would you mind telling me what this is all about? I'm sorry. I mean it, but I can't. Can't or won't? Both. He's dead. I know. Better get some sleep.
pleasant dreams. Grandpa? Grandpa! What is it, Mirkat? What? My gloves. Where are my gloves? Under the table. What is it? Where did it come from? Pep, the little, the little fisher boy. I've never seen anything like this before. No scientific record of such a creature. Look at the torso. The torso is that of a human being. And, and the articulation of the legs. Look at it. Look at it. But from where? From the... Oh, the cage. The cage, my dear. Yes. Soft cloth, Marisa. The flooring of the cage is rough and hard. very ugly, and yet it seems so frightening. Come inside, Miyakara. Marisa, come. Observe our strange friend. Look how much he has grown in but a few hours. It's unbelievable. Think, Marisa. Think of what would be said when I bring this strange creature to the Giardino Zoologico in Rome. No. Now I'm going to the village, and I'm going to see the young fisher boy and learn from him where in this sea it was that he found our friend. Sí. Can you inform me of the whereabouts of the boy Pepe? Pepe? Sí. But he's right over here playing like a Texas cowboy. Where? Oh, he is gone. Yet he was here a few moments ago. But I will see him tonight, Dottor, and I will tell him to seek you tomorrow. Ah, uh, tomorrow I won't be here. I'm just now on my way to Rome. I don't find it. It's all right. Grazie lo stesso.
come to Cerra. May I introduce myself, General? I'm Signor Rundi, Commissario of Police. Thank you, Signor Rundi. And this is Dr. Yule. Piacere. It's a pleasure. How do you do, sir? From the government in Rome, I received a telegram. I'm to cooperate with you. I'm at your service, Signore. Now, if you will come with me, I will take you to your Colonel Calder. Uh, he's not, uh, he's not badly hurt. Oh, no, General, don't you worry. He recovers quickly. <laughs> it's all I could do to keep him from coming to meet you himself. This way, please. Congratulations, Bob. You made it. You made it. The first man in all history. How does it feel? Fine, sir, except that, well... Yes, I know. As tragic the others died in the moment of their glory. But still, and I mean it, you deserve congratulations. Mine too, Bob. You did a magnificent heroic job. Is there some place where we can talk privately? My office is yours, General. This way, please. Avanti, per favore. Oh, I'm honored, signore. Gentlemen, may I introduce Signor Condino from the Italian Department of State, General McIntosh. Signor. Uh, Colonel Calder. Right. Dr. Yule. How do you do, sir? I want to thank you for coming so promptly, signor. And I want to thank your government for expressing its desire to cooperate in this matter. I must beg you, however, for the moment, to observe strict secrecy. It is understood. What I have to say, you will find incredible, but true. Colonel Calder here has just returned from an expedition to Venus. To Venice. Perhaps you mean Venezia. To Venus, the planet Venus. The planet Venus? That is correct. I was informed this matter was connected with something vast, but the the planet Venus? Man's first interplanetary voyage. On the return trip, the spaceship was crippled by a meteor. Except for Colonel Calder here, the entire crew perished. I am grieved. The problem that confronts us is this, Senor. The atmosphere on Venus is such that a human being cannot breathe and survive for long, even after using what we considered foolproof respiratory equipment. Several members of the expedition died there before the others realized the danger. And Dr. Sharman, the chief scientist, also became fatally ill. He died here after the ship crash. Fascinating. Horrible, but fascinating. Now, on that ship was a particular sealed metal container. In it is an unborn specimen of the animal life on the planet. We've got to find it. Our task is to discover in what physiological way life is able to survive and to flourish there. Not until that secret is learned can another expedition expect to return. And return we must, for on Venus important minerals were discovered that would be of vast benefit to our own civilization. I am at your disposal, General. In what way may I assist you? You need divers, several divers to descend to the wreck to search for the specimen. They will be here in the morning. Don't you want me to drive for a while? No, no, cara, non sono stanco, grazie. Buona fortuna. Grazie. And now, Signor Commissario, I should like to speak to the two fishermen who went aboard the wreck. Of course, General. I have them waiting. Now, if you will come with me, please. Verrigo, uh, Mondello, one moment of your time, please. Si, 
Signore Commissario. Uh, General, this is Verig and this is Mondero. They are the two men who went inside of the ship before she sank. The American general wishes to speak to you of an item of great importance. We are looking for a cylinder about this high and about this round. Uh, very probably it went down with the ship, but there's always the possibility that it was knocked loose and may drift ashore somewhere today, tomorrow, who knows. It is so important that we recover this container and its contents that I have offered a reward of a half million lira. Please spread that information around the... You will not take my heart Excellency from me. Silencio, Pepe. The general is speaking. Continue, general. Wait. What is it, son? What is it you wish to say? It is only if I speak of the thing from the sheep that you was promised to me that I may keep my heart from the great country of Texas. Well, of course you may keep your hat. What do you know about the big container? Um, there is a matter of a half a million lira. How much is that? Sufficient to purchase for me a cowboy horse like they ride in Texas? Enough to buy many horses. Now, what do you know about the big container? You promised to me about the hat, about the horses? You have my promise, son. It is there. Come on, follow me. Please, may I have my horse now? Empty. But I know where it is, the thing from inside. Where? Where is it? I took it to the Professor Leonardo and sold it to him for 200 lira. That is how I have the hat from Texas. Professor Leonardo, where is he? He must be somewhere on the road to Messina. He said he was going to Roma. Well, how will we find him? How will we know him? He drives a truck with the house that follows like a goat. A trailer. Find it as quickly as you can. I'll wait here for the divers. Yes, sir. Come on, Doc. Would you and your men accompany the colonel? Of course, General. Uh, andiamo, signor Conte. Besides, I have to see a, a man about a horse. And a half a million lira. The canvas has come loose. Ah, better stop then. You know, it occurs to me that our friend is perhaps a mutation. But of what species? I do not know. Now, here, you catch this on the other side, please. There's also the possibility that it might be a type of throwback toward the prehistoric and unknown. <laughs> I don't think so. I guess I frightened it as much as it frightened me. But its claw was so strangely hot. I beg your pardon, but you must be... Senor Commissario! Senor Commissario! A strange animal has escaped. A strange animal? Like something you've never seen before? Like something no one has ever seen before. It broke out of its cage and grabbed me by the arm. Oh, hello, almost a doctor. This creature, tell me about it. Well, first it was this high, then this high. Now it is tall, nearly as tall as a man. Is that the normal rate of growth? No. Not as far as I know. The only data we have is in Dr. Sharman's notes. 
Where's the animal now? It fled into the wood. Let's go. Let's no, go. please, please, wait, go. wait. Tell me, what is that creature? Where does it come from? I must know. We, we'll go with you, huh? I'm sorry, Professor. I can't now. Thanks for your help. Well, looks as though my patient is fully recovered. <laughs> Carlo, what you got for you? Don't move. Stay where you are. Let's back out quietly. Incredible. The creature has to be taken alive. There's a cart outside. Would you have your men bring it in the barn? Il carretto, per piacere. Now will you get me a long wooden pole? Un palo, subito. I've had nightmares in my time, but I've never dreamed of anything like this. Actually, they're not ferocious unless they're provoked. That poor dog must have jumped him first. That's good. <coughs> 
That's just what I need. Grazie. Now I'm going to try and prod the creature right into that cart. If I can get him in there, be ready to shut that gate. Come on down, pal. Jump. Come on. Come on. Okay. Come on down. Come on. All right, come on. Come on down. Come on. Come on. Get back. Stop it! Questa è una cosa che a me non piace. I don't like it. Colonel? Yeah? I hate to intrude on your precious private thoughts, but I'd like to change the bandage on your arm. No. You're worried about what happened today. About where the creature is tonight, aren't you? We'll find him. We've got to. I guess I've been pretty inconsiderate and self-centered. You've had a lot on your mind. That's an apology. I think it went in the wrong direction. All you've done is try to help. All I've done is snarl at you. I hope when this is all over, you'll let me try to make it up to you. Over a table for two in a dark cafe. With a candle burning on the table? And a bottle of wine. Bob! Bob Calder! Excuse me. Here's something, Bob. Charman wrote that the basic diet of these creatures is sulfur, raw sulfur. I remember that much. There are rich sulfur beds in Sicily, not many kilometers from here, at the base of Mount Etna. We'll scour that mountain area as soon as it's light. If the creature's there, we'll recapture it. At that time, I would consider it an honor to offer the facilities of the Giardino Zoologic in Roma for its observation and examination. That will not be necessary, gentlemen. There is no longer attempt to recapture the monster alive. I don't understand. I must inform you, Signor, that there is no more cooperation between us. The beast must be destroyed. He has injured one man badly, and he might kill others. 
My duty is the welfare of my people, not this uh, crazy scientific experiment on the Abba. Signore Commissario, you can't do that. Signore Commissario! Signore, please wait. Do bring the well for G for Si, Signore. Get in. That is my position. The safety of the people in this district is my affair. My primary affair, as long as I'm a commissario. It may be you can have me replace. That, of course, is your privilege. Until then, I intend to function as commissario. You are an efficient man, signor. A man of sincerity. There will be no thought of replacing. Then I must say that at daybreak, I intend to use every means at my disposal to destroy that creature before it kills someone. But you can't do that. Uh, yes, sir. May I remind you that the Commissario is a Sicilian police chief performing the duties of his office? I know that, sir, but... But what? Would there be any objection, General, if Dr. Yule and I tried to track this animal and take it alive before the Commissario has him destroyed? Not for me. Signor Cantino? How do you propose to do this? On Venus, we discovered quite by accident that these creatures are extremely susceptible to electric shock and that control voltage can paralyze them. Now, if we could have two helicopters and a squad of armed paratroopers, we might be able to drop an electrically charged wire net on the beast. A net. All I ask, sir, is permission to try. If... if this can be done before any human life is threatened, the Italian government will have no objection. All right, Bob, you shall have your copters. Thank you, sir. Thank you, senor. Fine, sir. That's good, Sergeant. Take those sacks of sulfur over to the other copter. Look, we're taking over a load of sulfur to feed our prisoner when we capture him. If the commissario doesn't capture it first. Andiamo, andiamo, presto. It's got to work the first time. Right. All right, men, load up. Let's go.
out of the animal dock. It's right by those sulfur pits. Right. Drop the net till it's clear. I'll drop the sulfur now. the bay, Doc. We're ready to move. Okay, we'll stand by. Another few feet and you got it, Doc. Maple's here. No, no, John, nothing's happened yet. Yes, I will. If you will all come in, please. The general will see you now. No, no. Whoa, looks like something now. Keep a line open. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the press. I am fully aware of the rumors that began with an air crash ten days ago off the coast of Sicily. Not until now have I received permission to make known the facts exactly as they are. Uh, this cablegram has been signed by the United States Secretary of Defense. In the face of widespread speculation and after consultation with various foreign governments, the president has authorized release of all information to press and news agencies for their immediate publication. The airship XY-21, which crashed into the Mediterranean Sea on the 11th, was a single-stage, astral-propelled rocket 
launched 13 months ago from a site within the United States. The rocket, with its complement of 17 men, had landed on the planet Venus. Venus? The planet Venus? Had landed on the planet Venus and was on the return flight to Earth when the ship plunged into the sea. There was one survivor, Colonel Calder, seated beside me, commander of the expedition. Some of you may also have heard the story of a monster now confined here in Rome's zoo. That beast is from Venus. It is an essential object of scientific study if man is to survive the atmosphere on Venus, poisonous to humans. May we be allowed to see this creature? I ask you correspondents to select three of your number to accompany Colonel Calder to the zoo. Those selected by you will, of course, pool their interviews with the entire press corps, and we will furnish you all necessary photos. Well, I guess that's all, and thank you for your patience. Sorry, old boy. My lie. John, get this. Eight days ago, it was about this tall. How do you account for this astonishing rate of growth? Or is that norm on Venus? No, it isn't. The scientists here believe that the Earth's atmosphere has upset its metabolic rate. The more air it breathes, the more tissue it builds, and the bigger it gets. If you'll follow me, please. You've undoubtedly heard of Dr. Gerhard Blankford of Vienna probably the world's top man in anesthesia. It's the doctor's job to keep the creature unconscious during the examination. Now, you'll note the wire running down to the creature's wrist. Dr. Blankford keeps 1,800 volts of electricity coursing through the body. More voltage, and it would die. Less, and it would awaken. Amazing. Utterly amazing. You can get a better look at the wrist connection this way. This is Dr. Kuroku of the University of Tokyo. He's assisting Dr. Yule. Another attempt to pry secrets from the creature, Doctor? We hope this electrodynamometer will enable us to complete our examination of oral passages. Could you give us any positive statement on your progress so far, Doctor? So far, we have come to one conclusion. The creature's olfactory system is more highly developed than any known on this planet. Find Dr. Yule on the platform. He's the man in charge. Sixty-seven cc's, correct? Si, exactamente. Sesenta siete. They're feeding the creature a compound of sulfur. Now, sulfur serves it as our vitamins do us. Grandpa, uh, will you need me anymore? No, no, grazie. Va. You caught me unprepared. I've been cooking over a hot creature all day. You're getting lovelier every time I see you. How is it the lights in this room? Well, next to that, I look dandy. Oh, Colonel. When you have a free moment, I'd like to tell you about the latest nightmare I've had. You're busy for the moment. Tell me now. Well, it concerns a dark cafe, a small table, a bottle of wine. And a burning candle? 
Mm -hmm. And that candle's burning lower and lower and lower. Pretty soon it's gonna burn out. Well, maybe if we hurry, we can find that dark cafe before it's too late. Good. Now, don't go away. I won't. Over here, please. Dr. Yule is expecting you. Dr. Yule, may I present Miss Reynolds, United Press, Mr. Maples of Reuters, Monsieur Lacroix, News France. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, General McIntosh has told us of the importance of knowing how this animal survives on Venus. Well, we've discovered that the creature's respiratory system includes a sort of a fibrous filtering element which blocks out all of the poisonous vapors on Venus. Fortunately, we've been able to duplicate that system almost exactly. It's like a plastic sponge. It is made of one of the new synthetics. By the way, Doctor, there's a rumor going around that uh, gunfire has no effect on the beast. Why? This beast has no heart and it has no lungs. It has instead a network of small tubes throughout its entire body. Hence, firearms affect no great damage. Yes, the dynamometer is coming on the platform now, Doctor. Please, right over here. And General, we need some firepower down here quick. All right, Bob, all right. And as soon as I do, I'll get down there. Stay with the beast, but get reports back to me if you can. Right, sir. The creature? Loose it on the rampage. If it isn't stopped, it'll kill hundreds, maybe thousands. We need artillery and tanks immediately. up one of the side streets. Yeah, I know. I can hear it. Doc, take them to the embassy. I'm going to track this creature as long as I can. Right.
This is Colonel Calder. Get me General McIntosh. And hurry, this is an emergency. It disappeared into the Tiber, General, at Ponte Umberto. What do you think, Bob? Would hand grenades force it out? I don't know. I can't tell what that thing will do or where it'll do it. It's worth a try, sir. There's an artillery unit deployed at, uh... Palazzo di Giustizio. The Palace of Justice, right across the bridge from where you are. They'll give you all the help you need. Start blasting it, Bob. We're moving up with another unit. Over on the other section of the Tiber. Yes, sir. Calder talking. Anything there, Bob? No, General, we don't spot it here. Nothing here either. We've blasted the Tiber Street through the city for hours now. Got any ideas? Hello, Bob. Head us toward the Coliseum. Yes. Sergeant, deploy your men. Si, senor.
Take your men up those stairs. Up here. There it is. Why is it always, always so costly for man to move from the present to the future? <laughs> 